Today on Beyond the Limit Show, we have a special edition in honor of the late Waberumburu. He cannot be summarized in a show or with a few words. Uh, there are two Kenyans who, of course, one is Reti now, who speaks fluent Swahili from Kikuyu land, because Kikuyus are not supposed to know Swahili. I think he's only the president, Uhuru, uh, who speaks fluent Swahili and fluent Kikuyu, the second one from Kikuyu communities. The only other person I know who was very good in those two vernaculars. Swahili and Kikuyu is Buru Awe. I've never met a person like Oiru before. Uh, before I met him, and since I met him, I've not met anybody like him. He's very, he was very, you have to forgive me to keep talking about him, like, because I still can't believe that he's not here. Uh, keep talking about him in the present tense, but he was very aggressive, he was very confident. Uh, you would never, sometimes you do things that I didn't like or I thought that this is not going to work and I would call, I would call him and ask Oero what's going on and he start telling me the reason why he's done it and all of those things were facts. You can't argue with facts, can you? So that story would end there and we would talk about something else and continue. He feared no one. Uh, is irreplaceable, honestly. I've never found, I've never seen, I've never had more producer a unique program with a unique voice, with deep research, the way Yelitendeka was packaged. I'll tell you that. It was a deep program. Um, Mburu was a very interesting man. I know, because um, when I started editing Yelitendeka, I was very young very young. Um, I don't think I was 20 yet, or I was going to clock 20. So him allowing a young person to, uh, to even start editing his program was a problem. So he took his time, he, he got to learn who I am, and he understood that I valued the job I was doing. So the minute he recorded, the first day he recorded with me, for me, it was the biggest privilege I had ever been given. Well, it, if it was humanly possible, of course, we would have saved the borough. And I have been with him for 17 years, so I know him very well. And uh, we brought in borough when we started struggle to broadcast uh, radio and television and after four years in Kota Gota license. That's how we ended up employing Boro. So we picked Boro. He was a teacher in a, a school near uh, Muranga Teachers College in Maragua. Uh, he, we, 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 we advertise that we want uh, somebody who can broadcast in Swahili. And that's how we picked the borough. The Wairu has died leading the biggest radio station in this country. People take it for granted. But at any given time, his station was reaching about 7 to 8 million people across the day. But you'd never know it. He was so humble, he was so, we would go like on road shows. First of all, you never tell the difference who is the boss with his team members and who is who. And they, if they go somewhere to drink tea in Mandazi, you'll be with them. If they go to the local uh, joint to have fun, you'll be with them. On the track, he would be with them, uh, dancing, doing all sorts of, of, uh, of things with them. One thing, he was very compassionate and he knew how to build teams. And he came in. And uh, he started a program called Wembe. 
Wembewa City. Uh, probably you people may figure out how Wembewa City is. And all Kenyans embraced Wembewa City. Yeah, it was a merry picking. People would write and say, uh, a policeman did this to me, a judge did this to me, uh, a teacher did this to me, and so on. So this web of a citizen <laughs> will tell us so many stories about local preachers and teachers. And it became a, a song, you know, teachers are all over the country. Even if a teacher quarreled with you, you say, I'm going to write to you, to write to the radio citizen. Again, it's, uh, to tell you, to tell them a story about you. And uh, they would, uh, you would be begging him not to write. Because they used to concord a uh, language in Kikuyu and in uh, Swahili. And the main way in Swahili. Him, I think because of his background as a teacher, his employees were not, uh, he never could. These guys were boys and girls to him. So every time there was a problem, he'd tell me, you know, uh, you know the girl has a problem, I'll talk to her. You know the boy is like this. You know, you know what the fella is going through? I think I know. Let, give me time, I'll talk to her. A lot of people have done things here that you would think, and most of them are young people. And he took it upon himself, even uh, issues like drinking, which comes with this culture of media and uh, uh, problems with finances. He would take it upon himself to say, Fred, I'll talk to that boy myself. All these people are boys and girls to him. And the, the least, the station with the least turnover here at Toronto Media is, uh, is uh, uh, Citizen Radio. He's built these people from scratch. Amekuwa mtu ambaye hana mambo mengi lakini mtu mwenye msimamo. Naweza sema kwamba Waweru alikuwa mtetezi wa wanyonge na alipenda sana kuelimisha watu kuhusiana na haki zao kwamba wewe kama binadamu kuna kitu ambacho haustahili kutendewa na mtu mwingine ama hata na serikali ama hata na institutions. Um, Waweru alikuwa kiongozi wa timu yetu lakini tulikuwa tunamuona kama baba kama ndugu mkubwa kwa sababu ya ushauri ambao alikuwa anatupa. Waweru alikuwa anashughulikia mambo yetu ya kikazi ya kinyumbani na ofisi yake ungepata hata watu ambao hafanyi nao wameingia kule kupata ushauri ama kutafuta ushauri I remember him as a very passionate man somebody who loves Christ genuinely uh, you could see that this is somebody who if he believes in something he goes all out I remember him for that a couple of times I've had, had him share with us in fellowship and he speaks with zeal, with great knowledge, with love for God and for his people. Uh, that is permanently etched in my mind. Every time I think about him, I think about uh, his inspirational words to us in fellowship. I think about how he challenges us. You know, when you listen to him, you come out wanting to be like him. Uh, Mosi lazima niseme kwamba yake ilikuwa sauti pevu, komavu, iloangazia mauvu kwenye jamii. Na mwisho wa siku, ililenga kusawazisha jamii yenye maadili. Uh, so, creativeness of Borrow to communicate, to deliver a message. You know, um, I guess uh, we never obtained his record as a teacher. But from the radio, we know how Borrow has been able to educate Kenyans, to give Kenyans information. Yeah. And uh, as he started there in the radio citizen starting growing, so he did not become the head of the radio citizen, citizen radio, merely by either being promoted for, he promoted himself. He's the one, uh, radio citizen, the size you see it now, that is Buru's effort, not anybody else. 
So that's how we know Boro. He was uh, probably one of the most valuable, he's one of the most valuable employees of Royal Media Services that we have lost. What can we say other than for Royal Media and on behalf of all those who have had uh, contact with the Boro, or they knew him, or those uh, who will remember him because of what he has educated them through the, the radio, uh, through physical contact and so on. Uh, on their behalf, I say we, we can only pray for him that his maker keeps him well because all of us will follow the same route one day something that has touched us uh, greatly, particularly my family. Uh, I remember one time we used to even to hide Boro in our, he would give a program in the Deca and the police would be looking for him and we would hide him in our house. <laughs> yeah, so Boro has, he has done a good job for loyal media. Yeah, we'll never forget him. But it's actually becoming apparent that he's not coming back to the office and it's, it's very difficult. It is. So, all we can ask for is uh, the strength and uh, that we will have the strength to survive this, and that time will heal and that eventually we'll be reunited uh, in the next world together. But we'll miss him. We'll miss Adia. Dear brother.